after 12. Ming's air attack on Baron's palace is beaten off and torch recaptured by Flash Gordon. But the escaping enemy ships carry off Dale Orton. Darkoff is tricked into Ming's power, and with Dale and Princess R already his prisoners, Ming now holds the whip hand over Flash and Baron. Flash leads a rescue party into Ming's palace by means of an abandoned tunnel and locates the room where Dale and Aura are held. Unaware that the room is protected by a death-dealing electrical trap, Flash, sword in hand, you wait out here. I'll go in alone. This may be a trap. Captain Torch reports that Flash Gordon and his comrades have rescued Dale Arden and Princess Aura and have fled with them. The gang of war summon the guard and search for them. Watch the laboratory. They may attempt to release Dr. Zarkov also. These prisoners are to be admitted and held in here. This is not a prison. This is an order. Are you going to obey? Yes, by placing you under arrest. <laughs> down that door. And by that time, I shall have a better and more effective defense. We'll hide these guys somewhere and take their uniforms. Remain here on guard. I must report this to His Majesty. Tom, whom you knew, Baron, I've been a prisoner here for years. Finally discovered the source of the terrific power Ming controls. Calm, confided the secret to you. Yes, the drug here. The power is derived from a strong beam of light, reflected from pure selenium, a new element, which gives the light great properties and permits it to be transformed into other forms of energy. Where does the light come from? Where all light and power originate, the sun. And it is this selenium that energizes the purple death dust, the great fire projectors, and all of Ming's weapons of death and destruction. Sire, the Earth Party with Baron and Aura have barricaded themselves in the laboratory. Surround the laboratory, but do not attack without an order from me. But, Sire, with our numbers, we can attack and conquer them. You, you! Don't you realize that with Dr. Zarkov in possession of my laboratory, he is more powerful than I am in my own kingdom? Dr. Zarkov is clever. No doubt, he has learned from Karns the secret of my sun power. And if we attack, he'll destroy us. No. He must be tricked into coming out. 
And I'll find the way. If we can control Ming's powerhouse, we can handle him. We can destroy him and his palace, but that would mean our death as well. It would be worth it. We could save the universe by doing so. And now, if I may speak to Dr. Zarkov. My rocket ship is loaded with enough solarite to destroy the principal cities of the Earth on contact. It is in my space court now. We will send it if you do not surrender at once. I doubt very much that one ship can do so much damage. I have enough ships and solarite to destroy your entire Earth. If you knew the power of it, you would not hesitate to meet my terms. This is a serious matter. I must consult my associates. Very well. I'll give you five minutes. Kind of you. Don't you believe in Zarkov? He's going to double-cross us. You mean he has no such ship as the rocket ship Zio? He has, he has, but he's going to send it against the Earth whether we surrender or not. I doubt very much if he has the powerful explosive solarite he speaks of. Ming scientists have for years been searching for an explosive powerful enough to destroy the Earth. I believe they have found it. And there's only one way out. And that is? Take Ming Zio's ship and destroy him with it. It all depends on whether you can control the defensive mechanism the space court here. It can be done. Well, where will we be when you destroy Ming? In Darkhaus rocket ship. I'll take off in the solarite ship and head back toward the palace, then bail out. You ought to be able to pick me up. Then you'd better let me go with you. No use two of us sacrificing ourselves. Sarkov doesn't answer our signal, sir. I'll stay here and control the death rays that guard the entrance to the space court. It means your death. Ming killed my spirit when he destroyed my people. For years, I've been waiting for this chance to avenge them. I understand. Notify Captain Sudan to open the tunnel gates for us. I will. Goodbye, my friend. Thank you. We'll never forget you, Professor. I fear the Earth people are up to something we know nothing of. I warm up the motor so we'll be ready to leave the moment Dr. Zarkov arrives. Zio ship. You cannot enter the space court until I have signaled Dorf to turn off the death ray. Look! That was caused by the death ray, operated by Dorf. Hello. Yes? Turn off the death ray on number seven. They are off. He says the death rays are turned off on number seven. All clear flash. I'll circle with the Zio ship until you take off and join me. Right. We'll keep in touch by radio. Good. Hope there's a parachute aboard. I'm sure there is. It's an essential part of the equipment. Well, good luck, Flash. Thanks. Gordon has just entered the space court and taken off your solarite ship. Why didn't my guards stop him? The guards cannot enter the space court. The death ray has been turned on. Uh, it's the work of that clever fiend, Zarkov. He's at the controls in the laboratory. Dr. Zarkov. Solar 
right ship. Gordon will not destroy his friends. Captain Torch speaking. Yes? Yes? I'll report. Sir, Dr. Zarkoff and the rest of the Earth people, including Prince Baron and Princess Aura, have escaped through the tunnel. They've taken off in their rocket ship. And Gordon will use the Solarite ship to destroy me. We must leave at once for the tower, use the auxiliary controls from there. Or the captain will shoot him to have them turned on. We'll find him in the guard room. calling Captain Suden. I can't get Captain Suden, sire. You must. Our lives depend on it. Keep praying. Captain Torch, calling Captain Suden. Suden, connect the control of the tower room at once. I never thought it would ever be in my power to save Ming the Merciless or to destroy him. Then you will not connect the controls? No. Calling Captain Suden in the guard control room. Hello? Is this Drulk? Yes, this is Drulk. Listen. Can you contact Zarkov? Yes, I can, Captain Sudi. Good. Tell him that Ming has gone to the tower control room. All right, I will. Drulk calling Dr. Zarkov. Calling Dr. Zarkov. Listen carefully. Ming has taken refuge in his tower control room. Tell Flash Gordon to head his solarite ship directly at the tower. I'll tell him. And that means you'll be saved, Drunk. I know that. But it also means that we can place Prince Baron on the throne of Mongo. Now we can save others who should not suffer from Ming's misdeeds. Flash. Flash. Where's back off? Ming has gone to his tower control room. You know where it is? Yes. I'll head toward there instead of the palace. Don't worry, I will. Captain Suden doesn't answer, sire. We're doomed. Send a messenger to him. Uh, there's no time for that. Our only chance is that Captain Suden will connect the controls. Then we can explode the solar right ship while it's in the air. Captain Suden, your emperor demands that you connect the controls in the tower room immediately. Bail out. He's close enough now. Not yet. He can't afford to miss. You've locked Ming and his retinue in the tower. Yes. And there's only one other way of escape for them. But they will be too terrified to think of it. as low as possible. ship will hit the tower. I'm sure it will. Watch the fireworks. Oh! Look! The Solarite ship is nearly upon us! To the caverns for your lives! It's locked! Destroying Ming, you have saved the universe. In his mad ambition, Ming declared that he was the universe. Then, since you have conquered Ming, I shall radio your father. 
Flash Gordon conquers the universe. And saves the Earth. What's our course now, Flash? Straight for Arborea. And back home. <laughs> Good evening, my little ghouls and goblins. Welcome back to Starlight Monster Movie Madness. Tonight, we've got a hauntingly special treat lined up for you, Carnival of Souls, a 1962 cult classic that's equal parts creepy, surreal, and unforgettable. Trust me, darlings, this one will make you think twice about taking lonely drives at night or trusting eerie carnival organists. Ghost. But before we dive into the shadowy world of abandoned carnivals and restless spirits, let's take a moment to talk about that Flash Gordon short we just watched. How did you like it? Are you rooting for Flash? Or are you here for the intergalactic chaos caused by Ming the Merciless? Let me know in the comments because I've got my opinions, but I want to hear yours. All right, grab your popcorn, turn the lights down low, and prepare for a night of chills, thrills, and mysterious thrills. Let's see if Carnival of Souls can take us all for a spin. Roll the film. There's no excuse to rest on your oars. So say the 73 members of the Oakland Women's Rowing Club. Most of them grandmothers, four of them great-grandmothers. They're only as old as they feel, and they feel like rowing on Lake Merritt. They've been doing it once a week for 37 years. Emily Manel is coxswain of one boat. No matter how you view their endeavors, bird's eye view or otherwise, you just have to give them a big hand. Their shipmates tried and true, keeping young as they bend to their oars. Your foot, boy. Look what we got here. Hey, you want to drag, huh? Sure. <laughs> Come on, man. Get ready. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sir, as high as this river is right now, and with all the mud and sand it's carrying, they may never find that car. Right there. All right, now let's hear your story about how it happened. It wasn't our fault, sir. Yeah? We were the first ones on the bridge, and coming uh, along, following the tracks, and they wanted to get around us, I guess, and uh, they lost control when they dropped you off. sure you didn't floor. crowd them off? Three hours. Yeah, not sure I want to find that car now. With this sand and with that current, we may never find it. Well, all I guess we can do is keep trying. Get out. Yeah, put this on. We better get you back to town. What about the other girls? I don't remember. Is this like the one I'll be playing in Utah? It's quite similar. I supervised the installation myself. The accident won't delay your going, will it? No. I'm leaving this morning. There's nothing I can do here. That's right. 
Well, Mary, you'll make a fine organist for that church. Be very satisfying to you, I think. It's just a job to me. Well, it's not quite the attitude for going into church work. I'm not taking the vows. I'm only going to play the organ. Oh, you want more than that? Of course, it doesn't pay much, but, well, at least it's a start. Are you driving by Benton to see your folks? No, I can't. I, I, I must hurry. I, I, I've got to leave. I'm going to drive straight through. Mary, it takes more than intellect to be a musician. Put your soul into it a little, OK? Good luck, Mary. Stop by and see us the next time you're in. Thank you, but I'm never coming back. Can I help you? Fill it up. All right. Uh, 
Have you anything else, lady? Could you tell me what that big structure is back a few miles by the lake? Oh, you mean the old bathhouse? <laughs> ah, that used to be a pretty ritzy place in the old days. Then the lake went down and they made a dance hall out of it. Then they put those buildings up out there and made some sort of a carnival there for a while. Ah, uh, that's years ago, though. Just stands out there now. I see. I have an address here of a rooming house. Could you direct me? Oh, sure. Well, that's just right over here a little ways. Been saving it for you since I got your letter. Could have rented it yesterday if I'd wanted. Oh, it, it's fine. It, it, it's just about what I expected. I knew you'd like it. This ain't no regular rooming house, you know. I only got you and Mr. Linden across the hall. Each room's got its own private bathroom, too. You can take all the baths you want. I'm not one to fuss about things like that. Thank you. I think I'll be quite comfortable. Well, hope you'll stay a while. I'm downstairs in the back part of the house, so if there's anything else you need, I uh, guess I'll have to wait till morning. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Thomas. And this, Miss Henry, is our pride and joy. You know this was made in the same town where I've been studying. Of course. That's where we heard about you. Oh, by the way, you have found a place to stay. Yes, I have a room. Good. Well, we hope you're going to like it here. We're not the largest church in this area, of course, but we have a nice congregation. We'll have to have some sort of reception. They want to meet you. Couldn't we just skip that? Skip that? Well, I don't suppose it's an absolute necessity. I don't know what some of the ladies will say. If they say I'm a fine organist, that should be enough, shouldn't it? Well, yes, of course. We'll uh, let it go at that for the time being. But, my dear, you cannot live in isolation from the human race, you know. Mind if I try this now? I want you to.
What do you see? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I've practiced the whole afternoon and it's gotten me in a mood. You need some fresh air. I've got to make a call out past the lake. Would you like to come along for the ride? You know that old pavilion out there? Mm-hmm. Will we pass it? Go right by it. Stop and look at it if you like. I would, with you along. Good. This used to be quite a place. It's been deserted for a long time now. Will you take me in? My goodness, no. It isn't safe out there anymore. That's why they put up this barrier. It'd be very easy to step around it. What attraction could there be for you out there? I'm not sure. I'm a reasonable person. I don't know. Maybe I want to satisfy myself that the place is nothing more than it appears to be. Would you take me out there? <laughs> no. The law has placed it off limits. Wouldn't be very seemly for a minister to <laughs> break the law, would it? No. Maybe I can come back some other time. Shall we go along now? in the country with my new boss, an elderly minister. Oh, that must have been a kick in the head. <laughs> I learned that from the other border, Mr. Linden. Did you get your supper? Oh, I forgot. Well, this ain't no boarding house, but I got some coffee and the sandwich makings left. I could bring you some up after a while. Good. I'll be taking one of those baths you're so generous with. Well, take as many as you want. I ain't one to make a fuss about a thing like that. I uh, wondered when you asked me in. I, I, I'm John Linden. I'm your neighbor right across the hall. Oh, nice to meet you. Would you excuse me? Hey, I'm... I, uh, I'm just wondering. I if just you're not mean, doing it. Uh, stand right there. to introduce myself. I'm Mary Henry. Oh, yeah, I know. I, uh, I heard you tell Mrs. Thomas you haven't ate anything yet, huh? 
Oh, yeah, I just thought, you know, being neighborly and all this. Oh, see, I haven't eaten anything either. I just thought we had to ask you out to dinner. Oh, that, that's very thoughtful of you, but I can't accept. I, I know, I know. We haven't met or anything yet, but I just thought I, we'd I'm be the sorry, same you'll have to excuse me. Look, there's a real nice restaurant, you know, right down the street, and I just thought. Well, I'm just kind of a guy who doesn't like to eat by himself. I've made arrangements to eat in my room tonight. Hey, if uh, you change your mind, you just holler. Well, it's kind of lonesome in here. Good night, Mr. Linden. Miss Henry, it's Miss Thomas. Who's the man in the hall? must mean Mr. Linden. He has the room across the hall. No, I mean the other one. There is no other. Me and you and Mr. Linden. Us three is all there is in this house. But, but you must have passed him out there. You're needing this food. Going without eating makes you jumpy sometimes. Maybe you heard the boards pop or something. These old houses creak worse than my knees. I didn't hear him, Mrs. Thomas. I saw him. Now, don't talk that way. I don't sleep so good as it is. It's these old houses. They, they're big enough so that you could hide a man in every corner. You just got to not let your imagination run away, Miss Are you going out there? Well, of course. There's nobody there. Now you just go and eat that sandwich I made for you. Don't drink the coffee if coffee keeps you awake. It won't. Coffee never keeps me awake.
morning. I heard your alarm. I knew you'd be up. Guess what I got? <laughs> I can't imagine. Uh, just what it takes to start the day off right. I make it in my room. You know, it saves me having to go out and get dressed up. I guess I had to get dressed to come over here anyway. Oh, oh it looks just like what I need. Well, and two cups of coffee coming up. Say, hey, uh... I guess you took her on last night about me coming to your door and all, huh? I'm not a very sociable person ordinarily. How can I resist an inducement like this? What? Now, come on, I don't know all those big words. I'm just an ordinary guy who works in a warehouse, that's all. I make pretty good money, though. Hey, look, I got a couple of shots left over from last night. You want a little bit in yours? Uh, no, thanks. It's not the recommended breakfast for a church organist. Oh, is that what you do? Hey, you mean they, they pay somebody to play the organ in church? Some churches do. Hey, I hope you don't mind about this. I just didn't know you were a church woman. To me, a church is just a place of business. <laughs> well, that's a funny way to look at it. Why? People seem shocked because I took a job in a church, and I, I regard it simply as a job. I'm a professional organist, and I play for pay, that's all. <laughs> Thinking like that, don't that give you nightmares? Strange you should say that. As a matter of fact, not for that reason, mind you, but I, I had the strangest feeling last night. Yeah. I had kind of a lost night myself. That's funny. The world is so different in the daylight. But in the dark, your fantasies get so out of hand. But in the daylight, everything falls back into place again. Let's have no more nights. Or let's make them more interesting. Huh? Say, uh, how'd you get to be a church organist? I studied it in college. <laughs> I could have gone to college. Yeah, I used to play pretty good football, but they wanted me to take a lot of classes and things, you know? Well, they're that way. Well, I'm just as smart as the next guy. Yeah, but I just didn't dig what they were teaching in school, you know? And. <laughs> The thing I hated most was principal products. Principal products? Yeah, you know, you know, like, uh, the principal products of Brazil are... Oh, Coffee, beans, and snake oil, you know, like that. Yeah. When I was in school, I couldn't care less. I mean, what I cared about was girls. Didn't they offer a course in that? If I would have done that, I would have graduated. What's the matter? Can you still taste the coffee? Come on, what do you think, I'm an alcoholic? Look, I just like to start the day off in a good mood, that's all. You must be hilarious by noon. Look, I'm just the kind of a guy employers want, you know, the happy worker. Come, come on, come on, Nay, make your morning happy. This morning, you're exactly what I needed. You're gonna need me in the evening, too, you just don't know it yet. I'll rinse off these cups. Oh, no, 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 it just spoils the flavor for tomorrow. Well, thank you for the coffee. It was unsanitary, but delicious. Well, uh, should have put some of the germ killer inside. Well, I uh, hate to leave so early. I think you can get through the door. Hey, you know, you got the wrong impression of me. Well, I meant because you had so many things to carry. Oh. Well, like I said, I hate to leave. Well, it's been a pleasure, Mr. Linden, but I'm sure you have to get to work. Well, don't you? No. I'll have the whole day free for shopping. <laughs> Does the hem hang right in back? We might change the hemline a little. The drape is just fine. Otherwise, it looks very nice. I'm sure it isn't very chic to take the second dress, but I like it. We alter it a little here to make it straight all the way around. There, do you want to go back to your dressing room?
I believe I'll have you deliver the dress if you don't mind. I did say I'd take it. What's the matter with her? Oh, what's the matter with everyone? Why don't they answer me? What is it? That man. I didn't mean any harm. I just stopped to get a drink. No. No. It was that man. That man. There was someone else there. That strange man was there. Now look, look, you've had a fright. Hysteria won't solve anything. Now control yourself. Look, I'm Dr. Samuel. My office is right across the street there. You've had a shock. If you would like my assistance, I'll be glad to offer it. Thank you. Could I come with you now? Certainly. I'll take her over to my office. We'll see that she's all right. It was more than just not being able to hear anything or make contact with anyone. It was as though, as though for a time I didn't exist, as though I had no place in the world, no part of the life around me. And then you saw this, this man. Yes. You'll excuse my back, but I wanted to get some of that written down. I must have been talking for an hour. Anything else? Anything you haven't told me? That's all there is. That's the whole story. He's been following me. That's all there is to it. It isn't that simple, though, is it? What do you mean? He could hardly have been in the park this afternoon, or one of us men would have seen him. And that night in the hallway, you said yourself the landlady came up a minute later, and she didn't see him, did she? What are you driving at? It's been less than a week since you were in a car that crashed into the river. How you got out of that, no one seems to know. But that experience must have been a serious emotional shock. You think I imagined all of it, don't you? You think I'm insane? I didn't say that. I don't mean that. I'm a competent person. If anything, I'm a realist. I'm not given to imagining anything. Hogwash. All of us imagine things. Have you never heard two men talking behind your back and imagined they were talking about you? Have you never imagined you saw someone you knew and walked up to them and found they were a perfect stranger? I don't see what this has to do with it. The point is this. 
Our imaginations play tricks on us. They often misinterpret what we see and hear. Do you agree? I suppose so. If that can happen in ordinary times, go a step further. Look what can happen in a high fever or following a serious emotional shock. It doesn't seem possible that I could have imagined all of it. Does this man, this figure, resemble anyone you've ever known? An acquaintance? Or your father? No. You have a boyfriend here or back home? No, and I have no desire for one. Never? No. I'm surprised to find myself saying that. But it's true. I have no desire for the close company of other people. Have you always felt this way? I, I don't know. Don't you want to join in the things that other people do? Share the experiences of other people? I don't seem capable of being very close to people. I, I do feel that perhaps I, I am trying to reach out for those other things. Do you feel guilty wanting them? I, I don't understand you. I'm not a psychiatrist, and, and perhaps I'm being clumsy at all this. But I am suggesting that perhaps this figure represents a guilt feeling. Oh, that's ridiculous. Maybe. Frankly, I don't know. Well, I know one thing. My imagination is playing tricks on me. I'm going to put a stop to it. You're a very strong-willed person, aren't you? I survive, if that's what you mean. That old pavilion out by the lake, somehow you associate it with all this, don't you? I could go out there. I could put an end to that, too. I could go out Now, there. don't be hasty. If it is all my imagination, I could put a stop to it. Maybe, but at least someone should be with you. Now, I can't possibly get As you say, get Doctor, now. I'm a person of strong will. And the time to go out there is now. And if I have to, I can go alone. Well, well, my lovely little horror aficionados. How's everyone holding up? Carnival of Souls is such a trip, isn't it? That eerie organ music the haunting atmosphere, and Mary's unsettling journey into the unknown. Pure nightmare fuel. Are you feeling the chills yet? Or are you still wondering where this roller coaster is taking us? Personally, I've got goosebumps just thinking about that abandoned carnival. Who knew something so run down could be so terrifying? And those spectral figures. Ugh, they give a whole new meaning to unwanted guests, don't they? But tell me, are you Team Mary? rooting for her to escape this strange purgatory, or are you secretly cheering for the ghosts? Be honest, I know some of you are here for the spooky drama. Drop your thoughts in the comments or just scream into the void. I'll hear you either way. All right, grab a snack, maybe a cozy blanket to hide under, and take a deep breath. We're only halfway through, and trust me, the creepiest moments are still lurking just around the corner. Don't drift away now. Carnival of Souls is far from over. Gatefield's jockey Willie Shoemaker dons racing silks for an attempt at turf immortality. He's inscrutable as ever, though he's already tied Tony DeSpirito's all-time record of 390 victories in one season, though he's out to top it. And here it is, riding the hoop. In the third race, he sweeps across the finish to the cheers of a legion of backers. Four and a half years after his track career began at this Albany, California course, he returns to earn all-time track honors.
Say, uh, I don't want to get turned down again. I was thinking of asking you out to dinner. I stopped for a bite to eat on the way in. Anyway, I have to practice at the church this evening. Well, look, uh, how's about if I took you up afterward and you know, go someplace and dance or something? I'm sorry. I'm not much for dancing. Uh, hey, uh, you mind if I ask you a question? I won't know until I hear it. What, are you afraid of men? No, I'm not afraid of men. Uh, well, you seem sort of cold. This morning when I brought you the coffee, friendly. This morning I needed company. Well, maybe you'll need company tonight. It's better than walking home alone. Yes, it is. I should be finished around nine. Will that be all right? <laughs> That's okay by me. Say, uh, I'll see you in church. Huh? Profane, sacrilege, what are you playing in this church? Have you no respect? Do you feel no reverence? And I feel sorry for you and your lack of soul. This organ, the music of this church, these things have meaning and significance to us. I assume they did to you. 
But without this awareness, I'm afraid you cannot be our organist. In conscience, I must ask you to resign. That does not mean that I am abandoning you, nor should you turn your back on the church. There is help here, and I urge you to accept it. Hi there. I've been waiting an awful long time for you. My car's just over there. I know just the right place to go. Don't you drink either? Not really. Not really. How else is there if you don't drink really? Answer me that. Hmm? Now, me, I not only drink really, I really drink. What's the matter? Do you like the music either? I like it fine. <laughs> you don't like it. You don't like to dance and you don't like to drink. You don't like for a man to hold you close. That's it, isn't it? I didn't say that. You haven't said anything all evening. Why don't I go play that song again? You like it so much. Hey, Johnny. Who's the doll? Nobody you know, chicken. Oh, come on now. You've been holding out on me. That's not the kind of pig you usually drag around. You quit licking your chops. She's out of your class. You want to bet? Lay off, huh? I got something on the stove there, man. Well, listen, I'll help you put it over. I don't want her to think I even know creeps like you. Good luck. Meet someone you know? Yeah. He's a college fella. He, uh, told me about this girl who wanted to meet me. Wanted me to meet her. What'd you tell him? I said, how could I? You're my date, you know. Said you, uh, didn't seem to enjoy my company much. Well, that's not true. I really appreciate your taking me out this evening. I'd had a miserable night if you hadn't. <laughs> Forget it. Come on. Here, join a party. Drink up. Look, I paid good money for that stuff. It ain't poison. I'm sorry if I annoy you. You know, I don't get you. First, you stand me off. Well, that's okay. That's class. Figure you got something, you're just holding back. Now, everything I say is okay. You're a mouse. Yesterday, I didn't care. Tonight, I want to be with you. Me or just with anybody? With you. Why don't you thaw out, hmm? But maybe you want to be alone, huh? I'll leave no, you alone no, if that's know. what you I, want. I, I, I like being with you. Really, I do. I don't want to be alone tonight. I want to be near you. You mean that? 
Yeah. Why don't you and me get out of here, hmm? You know, my room's only a couple of feet from yours. Ain't likely to get very far from me, are you? What's the matter with you? What's going on around here? What's the matter with you? That man's after me. You gotta stop him. He's after me again. I'm getting out of here. Now you have to go. <laughs> Not me, sister. That's just what I need. Get mixed up with some girl who's off her rocker. What did you find out, Doctor? Not very much, I'm afraid. I'm sure glad you just happened around. I was gonna call somebody, but I was afraid it'd have to pay the bill. I came on purpose. I've been thinking about her ever since she left my office yesterday. What's she been up to? Oh, only the devil knows that. I heard her moving things all around that room all night. Never heard such goings on. And she wouldn't let me in her room this morning. She's a strange one. Mm. She absolutely refuses my help. I can't say that I blame her. There's something about her that completely baffles me. I've urged her to call upon me if she feels she needs help, and I hope she will. I can't let her stay in this house. You won't have to worry about that. She's determined to leave the city, and she wants to get away as soon as possible. I hope she does leave. I hope she can.
decided to leave, did you? Where you going? I can't refund none of your week's rent when you go off like that. like your transmission. Can you pull it up on the rack? Okay, fine. Will it take long? Well, I have to check it first. Would you like to get out? May I just sit here? Sure. Suit yourself. When is the next eastbound bus? When is the next bus leave? I must get on. I want to get out of here. I want to get away from here. Eastbound bus, now loading, gate nine.
closed the way. Wait, wait. Let me in. You've got to let me in. I've got to get on that train. I've got to get away from here. Please. Will you help me? I need your help. Just a moment, please. to you, Doctor, because you're my, my last hope. If, if you don't help me, I'll, I'll have to go back there. He's, he's trying to take me back somewhere. Doctor, you've got to tell me what to do.
the car is still over there, and then her footprints leading up to here. And then nothing. And that, my dear spooky friends, wraps up tonight's haunting feature, Carnival of Souls. Wasn't it a wild, ghostly ride? From the chilling organ music to Mary's eerie descent into the unknown, this film has definitely earned its place as a cult classic. Thank you so much for spending your evening with me here at Starlight Monster Movie Madness. If you love the movie, or even if you're sitting there with more questions and answers, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps keep the spooky vibes going. And hey, if you're ready for more creepy classics, sci-fi adventures, and everything strange and mysterious, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a night of monster movie madness.